Welcome back to my dining room table build. My name's Guy. Uh, last time I showed you how I did the joinery on the curved rails uh, going to the end assemblies. This time I'm going to show you how I put all this together and get to this point. When I dry fit the piece together, it gave me a few measurements which I'm going to need now to make the internals for the sliding uh, table halves. The first is the distance between the inside of the two rails. And I know that is 31 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now I need to make four dividers inside the piece. I'm going to make those out of maple. I've got some three quarter inch maple here milled up. And again, I'm going to make 31 and 7 eighths. Now I need to be able to put all the internals together inside the piece after it's been glued up. So all those are going to be slid into place using sliding dovetails. So I know if they need to be 31 and 7 eighths, I need to add 3 quarters of an inch for a 3 eighths inch dovetail on either end. So that would make it 32 and 5 eighths. But the first thing I need to do is I need to rip this piece down two strips, 3 and a half inches wide, which is the same width as my uh, side rails. So I'm going to start doing that right now. I've got one of the long rails for the dining table and I've got the miter facing down because there's going to be sliding dovetails on the internals here. So this is the face and based on some drawings that are sketches that I made, I need to put a mark 2 and 5 ace and 22 and 5 ace. on the face of that board. Um, now I'm going to carry those around. So I'm getting ready to route those uh, dovetails in these boards. And what I've got is I've got a couple blocks set up on my bench here. I've also got this board which is perfectly perpendicular to this line of dogs. These are the same, these are cutoffs from these rails and these are the same thickness as those rails. I'm going to use that so I don't get any blowout on the end. Now I've got these rails with both the tops of the rails facing inwards because I have to make mirror images. If there's any inconsistencies on the other side, I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to butt this up against here so it's all nice and flush. And I know it's going to be square. I'm going to lock that down. And what I'm going to do is take my Festool rail here, put that into the holes. Now I know this is going to be perfectly square to that, which it is. And I've got my router set up with a guide rail that rides along this track. Now this is a pretty fancy setup. You don't necessarily have to do it this way. Obviously you don't have to do it this way. Just a regular router with a straight edge and you can accomplish the same thing. You just have to be very careful to make sure when you're setting up the rail that it's uh, perpendicular to the boards. So, that's all ready to go. Well, after I've got that first one cut, I need to move the rail down, readjust the length of the bars themselves, and then cut the second one. There's both sliding dovetails cut in both rails for the uh, dividers. I need to make sure I keep, again, the top rail, the top of these rails sandwiched together. I need to flip this around, do the same thing to the other end, and then I'll be done with doing the dovetails for this. Well, after I've got all the dovetails cut on these dividers, this is the fit I'm looking for. I want it to go nice and easy. But I want it to be snug, but not too snug. There's a, a real fine line there. Um, I've got to be able to put glue in this and assemble it when it's together. So there's a little bit of play in it, and that's fine. I want it just a tiny bit loose. But I want these to be able to come in and out of those sockets pretty easy. Well, here's a rough dry assembly of the table. Very rough. I just wanted to make sure that all these dovetails fit and they're the right length, which they are. All the joints came together nice and tight again. I'm getting ready to, to mark out where some slots are going to go 
in the top and then the end rails of these for the slides to come through that the top attached to. Now this is the top and I know these are going to come in two inches from this point. So it's going to make a mark here and I know I want them to be two inches deep. So I'm going to bring that across like this. Now I also know that the slides that are going to come through here are three quarters of an inch. The slides themselves are a half inch. I want to give myself a little bit extra slop. So I need to go two and three quarters, a half, and then I'm going to give myself an extra eighth of an inch. So that's three and three eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to mark here for that. And then this is the area I need to cut out on these end rails. So I'm just going to mark one side of this set up my miter gauge to cut these out and I'm going to cut out both ends of this and obviously both end rails. So I've got my fence readjusted to take off the rest of this little piece right here. I just need to run them through. I'm getting ready to lay out the joinery that's going to uh, connect the center long rail with these curved stretchers. I have always maintained on both of these pieces this center line. So this is actually a cutoff from a piece that I've already milled up for that center divider or that center stretcher. And I'm just going to line that up with that center line on this piece. And once I have that in place, try to hold as steady as I can. I'm just going to knife just a little mark here of exactly where that's going to meet. Once I have that, I'm going to mark down one and three quarters of an inch, which is halfway down. Mark that line. Once I have that established, I'll be able to knife down here cut out a little bit of the other chisel and I'm going to cut that with a handsaw. Well, I've got this pretty close to where it needs to be. I really don't dare to get it any more than that. I just want to make sure that the bulk of it is cut before I do the assembly of the end rails. And any little bit that I need to adjust, I'll actually adjust when I fit the piece together for the final glue up of the base. So after this one is done, I just need to do the other one and then we're ready to do the assembly of these end rails. Well, after what seemed a very long time, I got these glued up. Um, one of my clamping blocks broke on the first one, and uh, it, was, it was very, very difficult. Those dominoes are very tight. On the second one, I lightly sanded them so they'd go in a little bit easier. I used Type on 3 on this. I sh might have used epoxy to make it a little bit easier, but like I said, the second one went together a lot easier. Uh, they're nice and square. Uh, one of them's about a sixteenth of an inch off, and, and I'm not going to go chasing it. I'm going to let these dry in the clamps for maybe four to six hours before I mess with them. Uh, I'm just going to leave them right where they sit for now. Well, I've got the end assemblies out of the clamps. I'm getting ready to attach the long rails to those end assemblies. What I've got here is it's kind of a unique situation. My assembly table is not anywhere near enough, large enough to do this. So I've got a piece of half inch MDF I've got between my table saw and my outfeed table. I've got it shimmed. It's relatively flat. There's a couple low spots. However, I'm not going to spend an hour trying to track those down. I do not want to do this on my garage floor. It's horribly uneven. So I've also got a couple large clamps here that I've got the extenders on so I can clamp all this together. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on this and uh, glue it up. This came together fairly easily. Um, I did sand those dominoes down and make sure I put plenty of glue on so I didn't starve the joints. Clamps went on easy. 
I really just need to make sure everything is square on this. Um, I only get one shot at this like most glue ups. Everything looks pretty good. 73 and 3 quarters. Seventy-three and three quarters. It's dead nuts perfect. I'm gonna let this cook in the clamps for probably a couple hours before I try to move it. I'm gonna remove some of the squeeze out. Uh, there's not much, and uh, then we'll move on from there. I've got the base out of the clamps, and uh, this is the trestle piece that's gonna go in between the two curved rails, and this is gonna fit in here like that. Now I know my rails down here are three and a half inches. This is one and seven eighths. So I need to cut this at three and a half inches, but actually I'm going to make it a little bit proud of that. I'm going to add an extra quarter of an inch because I'm going to put a bevel along the top and uh, you'll see how that works when I get it done. So I need to go three and three quarter inches on this piece right here. I've squared up the other end of this board and I've put it in the slot. It's about maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch proud of the, of the uh, outside of it. So I'm going to go over to this board here and I'm going to mark the outside edge of this and I'm going to cut it to length. I'm going to cut just a little bit long of that line. I want to keep this a little bit extra long for just a little bit here. Now I've got the piece back in. I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark and I'll mark both sides. I'll get the other end. And I also want to mark underneath here as close as I can anyways. Now when I start, when I do the cutting on these, I'm going to do it with the handsaw. I want to make sure that I leave the line. I'm going to cut to the waist side of the line. standing proud of this still a little bit. I'm going to sand that down off camera and get that nice and smooth. But I mean it's just a very, it's a hairline gap. I am not going to go nuts about that right now. Um, I'm going to glue this up off camera and basically the base with the exception of the sliding parts and the internal parts is done. Well that's it for now. Next time I'll work on getting the internals done and the sliding mechanisms for the butterfly top. Uh, thanks again for watching and if you haven't yet please subscribe. We'll see you later.